Hey guys, brand new battery here for review today, and this one comes with some exciting news. Ampere Time, the company that has brought us reliable and affordable lithium iron phosphate batteries, will be rebranding themselves as Lee Time going forward. They have some big plans over the next several years in developing some new products and solutions for energy generation, storage, and conversion. You can read all about this announcement on their website, which I will leave a link to down in the video description. This is one of their batteries under their new brand name. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We'll go through the usual process. We'll take a look at the features. We'll do a capacity test and then we'll tear it down to see how it's built inside. Taking a closer look at the battery here, we see this is 12 volt, 100 amp hour, like we already said. This is the smart edition. It's got a newer smart BMS in. On the top here, we have a serial number in the top left corner. On the right, we have the OTCB logo that stands for One Touch Control Battery. We have our positive and negative posts. These are the epoxied in terminal studs, the standard M8 bolt. Uh, and then we have an on off button here, which has a number of features for controlling this battery. And then we have our nylon carry strap. And worth mentioning too, the dimensions of this battery are slightly different than what we typically see. This measures 10.8 inches in width. We have eight inches in height and then we have 8.1 inches in depth. All right, so our user's manual comes in this nice little plastic pouch. And uh, I've really gotten to like these pouches they include because once you set up your battery installation, you can put all of your manuals in here, your battery manuals, your inverter manuals, uh, your charge controller manuals, any wiring diagrams, and then stow this away nice and neat by your equipment for when it's needed later for servicing. Uh, so here is the primary manual this came with. I've already had a chance to read through it. It is very well written and laid out. Uh, here are the battery dimensions we've already gone over. The primary specifications, it's a 100 amp hour battery. It's got a recommended charge of 20 amps or 0.2 C. The maximum continuous charge and discharge is 100 amps. And it's got a max discharge surge time of three to 500 amps for up to five seconds. This does have low temperature charge protection. It will stop charging at zero degrees Celsius. Interesting feature with this BMS, this new smart BMS, you can optionally disable the low temperature charge protection if you would like. Uh, so here's just some information on the LED indicator. We've got several pages explaining the lithium iron phosphate charge cycle, some recommended charging parameters for your controller, and you can wire a maximum of four of these batteries in series for a 48 volt system. Uh, so the page I found most interesting was that that explains the low temperature charging protection feature and uh, you can actually override the protection in the event of emergency. For some reason, if you need to charge your battery below freezing, it is not recommended, obviously, as noted here. However, if you would like to override that protection, you simply press the button twice, uh, two short presses less than five seconds apart, and you see it turns green and you can begin charging your battery. So as an added safety of the safety feature, this override will not work if the temperature is below five degrees Fahrenheit or negative 15 degrees Celsius. All right, this battery has completed charging. As per the usual, I use my Ames Power 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger. The test load is a 2000 watt inverter connected to a series of incandescent light bulbs. On the display here, we see amp hours and watt hours discharged measured using a Batrium BMS shunt over here on the left. And we're discharging right around 300 watts. We'll be back when this test concludes. And our test finished at 101.7 amp hours. All right, here we go. All right, and right away I can tell this does look different. This does not look like a BMS I have seen before. Uh, and quick look before we start disassembling this. We have three number 10 gauge silicone insulated wires, 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. We have these large rubber covers over both the positive and the negative here, and they are glued down. So pulling one of those off, we can see the uh, bolts here. It is a crimped lug and it's bolted down and they've got some silicone. And here's the control wire off of that button. I see five leads here. Those are going back to the BMS on the right hand side. The center side appears to be the balance leads for the battery. Then this connector here is what appears to be temperature sensors. I see one temperature sensor going into the BMS and I see one temperature sensor going down into the battery. It was not easy to pull that BMS off. They had it glued on there pretty well. It's pretty much just the adhesive from the foam that was holding it across the top here, but man, it had a good hold in those cells. But otherwise, look at this battery here. This is built very, very well. I noticed right off the bat, these are GFB cells. 
They are model number 0ALCB835100D. They are 100 amp hour cells. These cells are laser welded together with some aluminum strips. We have the balance leads routed nicely up the center of the battery pack here. They are labeled, I can see this is B1, this is B3. They are terminated with ring terminals here and they are screwed into threaded holes in this bus bar. So this is a perfect way of doing the balance leads. Taking a look at the structure of the battery pack here, they have built this steel frame that goes the whole way around here. And we can see it's built in four pieces. We have two end pieces and then we have two long pieces that go along the side. And those are held together with some bolts, two on each corner of the battery pack. And what I like to see most about this design is, if you remember one of the prior videos we did, um, I noted that the clamping mechanism was actually squeezing in the corner of the cell. They've actually completely fixed that with this new design. And we now have insulated protection between these metal pieces and the battery cell. So there is zero contact between this metal frame and the battery pack. I very much like seeing that. And uh, this is not actually clamped on very tight. You can see I can move it up and down. So it's fixing the cells in place. It's not exerting compression on them. So taking a look at the other side of the battery pack, we can see the main negative. The three conductors go onto the battery over here. We have the main positive here where I've pulled back the cover. It's got a threaded nut on the end and there's a screw holding together the main negative lead. Uh, a separate lead which goes to the BMS for the BMS power. And then we also have the positive for the balance lead. So uh, the temperature sensor is located here directly on the side of the battery. That is a perfect placement for a temperature sensor. These cells all appear to be perfectly straight. I don't see any swelling, bloating. There's no unnecessary gaps between them. Uh, that would indicate any sort of swelling. All right, so taking a look at this BMS, they have this metal plate on the top, which I did remove. And I noticed this is labeled as a lead time brand BMS. So they must have actually made their own BMS. They engineered this BMS specifically for their needs. That is very, very cool. So we can see here the model number is S12100. And we see 4S and 100 amp and 100 amp. I assume one of these says charge and one of these says discharge. I don't read Chinese, that's just based on my assumption of how it's laid out. So I've already removed the screws. There are one, two, three, four, five, six on the top and six on the bottom. Appears to be stuck. I hope I didn't miss one. Is there one in the center? I don't think so. Ah, they've got one hidden under the barcode here. Okay. Guys, look at that. Look how clean and well done this is. So it does appear to be conformally coated as well, which will help with moisture resistance. We can see here where the second temperature sensor comes down and is affixed near the FET transistors. And it looks like they must have a version of this with self-heating. I see a place where a transistor would go to control a heating circuit and some other unsoldered pads here. But uh, where the balance lead comes in here, we can see the four bleeding resistors if this does need to balance and the transistors that control those bleeding resistors. We see the communications input here. We have LEDR, LEDG, so I assume that's green and red, and that explains the fifth lead we saw. We have uh, VDD, ground, B4, and switch. So that's actually six pins. Is there six? Did I miscount those wires? Nope, it appears they are not using uh, lead number three. So they've got switch, B4, VDD, LEDG, and LEDR, but the ground pin is not actually connected. And I did notice here on the left, it says Sir Dance, and then it says August 22nd, 2022. So maybe this is the manufacturer of the PCB. And we just have another series of FET transistors on the bottom. Not too much to see. Uh, I assume one side's probably the charge FETs and one side's probably the discharge FETs. All right, so now we're ready to test the low temperature charge protection of this BMS. The LED is flashing on the display, it's turned on. So we're going to go ahead and turn up the voltage of this, of this power supply. Uh, so we're charging the battery at approximately nine amps. Just going to spray this temperature sensor with the uh, computer duster, which should put it well below freezing here. Instantly, almost instantly, that was about three seconds it took to shut off. So the last step is to check the over temperature protection. I have a heat gun here for that. All right, and you see it stopped charging. That took approximately eight to nine seconds I was counting there. So all of the thermal functionality works flawlessly in this battery. So there we have it, the 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate smart battery from Lead Time, formerly known as Ampere Time. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on too is the warranty of these batteries. 
In the past, the last time we saw a brand change from an unrelated company, viewers expressed concern over the prior warranty commitments. I asked this question up front to lead time and said, what happens to the warranty on Ampere Time batteries? And they let me know that lead time will be covering all of Ampere Time and lead time's warranty and service needs going forward. The Ampere Time batteries are still under warranty. If you have a question regarding the warranty on either Ampere Time or lead time batteries, you can go ahead and send an email to the address shown on your screen and they will help you out and get your questions answered. Lastly, let's take a look at pricing. The battery we tested today sells for $480. They do have another version without the smart PMS functionality or low temp charge protection, which sells for $330, also including free shipping. They did provide me with a discount code I can share to take 3% off your order. You can find that discount code along with links to both of these batteries down in the video description. And using that link to purchase your battery tells them that you saw this video and it also helps me fund more projects on this channel. As always, any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.